Good afternoon, Easton. I am Carrie Rapolo, and this is the Shovel Town Scoop. Today is Monday, February 15th, 2016. All right, so last week during the Finance Committee meeting, Superintendent Dr. Keogh, along with co chair of the School Committee, Dr. Lori Hahn, presented a look at the Easton Public Schools costs of operations, along with rankings and a comparable list of course offerings. Here's Dr. Hahn discussing comparables to Mansfield High School regarding per pupil expenditure. I compare us often to Mansfield just because they're our neighbor. Um, they match us very well in every single comparative website I've ever seen, whether it's the DOE or ClearGov or what Mr. Colton came up with. Mansfield is like always paired up with us. Some of the others come and go. We used to overspend them probably about six years ago by a little bit. They've invested a lot. They overspend us now by over $500 per child and they're going for a 6% budget this year. Their scores have surpassed us, particularly I think in their science. Um, and it's just investment. You know, I think, um, you know, we're not declining, we are, but we are not moving forward the way I think we're capable of. Dr. Hahn also went on to explain that the Easton Public School students may not be keeping up with the current curriculum when answering the question of where we may fall short when comparing Easton to other school districts. Let's take a look at her discussing those facts. If you look at the DOE website, there's something called annual yearly progress, which is how you compete against yourselves. And in several um, different categories, we're not keeping up with that. And particularly in moving our children from proficient to advanced. And that, I, and, and to me, when you talk about personally what, what um, I think about, it's, it's that niche too. Are we challenging kids as much as we could? Um, and I think we're falling short in some measures on that. Mm -hmm. right. At the same meeting, Town Administrator David Colton presented the town's fiscal year 17 budget and explained what happens if we use a stabilization fund to allow for a 2% increase in the budget. Here's a clip of David talking about that. Um, the, an alternative to that was utilizing some of the stabilization fund to allow a 2% increase in the, in the budget. What we would do is we would use stabilization fund to fund those uncontrollable and fixed costs and when you take those away it allows for a two percent increase in the operating budget so that's kind of, that's how we got to two percent two percent wasn't a magic made up number it was hey what happens if we take stabilization fund fund all those things that aren't operating costs that we don't have any control over and then see what's left in revenue and divide that up in the operating budget so they came to two percent Mr. Colton also discussed a much needed override budget, focusing on various department heads. He asked uh, each department head to give him a presentation. So let's see who he targeted and the reason why. He asked uh, some of the department heads to submit two budgets, their 2% budget, or their, their, their level service budget, plus their override budget. Those departments were health and community services, public works, police, and fire. Um, I know other departments have needs, but I thought these were the, the ones that we should focus on. If you'd like to watch the Finance Committee meeting that is inclusive of Dr. Keogh, Dr. Hahn, and David Colton's presentations regarding the fiscal year 17 budget, you can view it on our website, which is eastoncat.org, and you can find the, the Finance Committee dated February 10th. At the February 9th Historical Commission meeting, developer David Howe discusses a REAPS submitted plans for the church building at 140 Main Street. A number of changes proposed in the new plans include updates to the stained glass windows and other building modifications. The final plans and specifications submitted on February 9th did not adhere to the certificate of appropriateness granted from the Historical Commission at the December 22nd meeting. Here's a clip with a little bit of a back and forth between Wayne Beatler, representing the town, members of the commission, and uh, developer David Howe. At that meeting on the 22nd, it was discussed that final plans and specifications that reflect the agreement and the certificate of appropriateness would be submitted for commission approval. Which we did. And that is what we are here to discuss tonight. Like some of them are here. But the here, but then there's the so revised. We'll to, I'm going to leave the shingles that are on there. The so the like the A2.2. Yeah, so we'll go by the ones that were submitted on the 22nd. There were none submitted on the 22nd. The commission needs final plans and specifications that reflect the certificate of appropriateness, that reflect so, the agreement hold on. on the 22nd. So we're having a meeting. We are having a meeting to accept the final plans and specifications. And you're saying you don't have the final plans and specifications? You have submitted them. That is what we are looking at here. 
Okay. These are the plans and specs submitted. Yep. Does the commission approve these as accurately reflecting the certificate of appropriateness? So we have to take, is, they, is this a votable? They don't, they don't match. So they don't match. They, they don't match. They don't They're match. not accepted. They do match. Well, can we kick it's out the one the like the R? Because there's, that has there's two, two options. versions. That's all there is. Can we approve the version? And is there enough detail? With and is there enough specification in four of the five sheets? You know what? I won't throw it. That's ridiculous. So. This is foolishness. You know what? You're not put here to do this. This is crazy. I'll pull my building permit. If you would like to watch the Historical Commission meeting dated from February 9th, you can go over to our website, eastoncat.org, and you will find it there. All right, so the Town of Easton has partnered with CGI Communications to, pro to provide us a series of online videos that highlight everything our community has to offer residents, vendors, and business owners. With this partnership, business owners will be able to take part in showcasing their businesses with the Town of Easton to help boast their presence in this competitive marketplace. If you're a business owner and like to participate in this townwide program, you can find more information on the town website and click on the Economic Deve Development Council's link at easton.ma.us. All right, so next up, let's take a look at the Oliver Ames sports schedule as the winter sports are coming to a close. If you would like to find the most up-to-date information on sports schedules, you can go over to hockamocksports.com. The Easton Rec Department also announces T-ball registration is now beginning. You have until March 17th to get your child signed up for the upcoming T-ball season, and that runs from May until about mid-June. It is for children aged 5 and 6 years old. Um, born between May 1st, 2010 and July 31st, 2011, you can find the form for download at easton.ma.us and search for T-ball under the Recreation Department. And then we have some fun events coming up over the next month. You can save the date for the very talented Oliver Ames High School presentation of The Wizard of Oz. You can find those tickets listed there at oatickets.us. You can choose your seats. Also coming up is um, in March on the 11th is the Irish Evening at the Queeset House from 7 to 10 p.m. The Queeset House will be transformed into traditional Irish pub. You can enjoy live Irish music and food from the Blackthorn Public House, along with an Irish whiskey tasting. And then, of course, coming up in late April there on the 30th is the PMC Bike Ride for Kids held at Parkview Elementary School. This is open to the public. And this event raises money for adult and pediatric cancer research for Dana-Farber and the Jimmy Fund if you'd like to sign your child up for this fun event where they get to ride their bikes or scooters. And they are cheered on by our community. You can go to kids.pmc.org and search for Easton. All right, so that should do it for this scoop. We will see you here again next week. Uh, I hope you have a good evening.